Suppose we're given the following triangle. We have two angles, 30 degrees and 15 degrees. I'm given the lengths of two sides, x and 10. I want to use the law of sines to solve for x. Now, what does the law of sine state? Suppose I'm given a triangle, three angles, capital A, B, and C. We'll put in the lengths of the opposite sides as A, B, and C, but in lowercase. So we'll have A and A, B and B, C and C. What the law of sine states, if we take a length of one side, put it over the sine of the corresponding angle, that ratio is always equal. So we'll have lower A over sine of A equals lower B over sine of B equals lower C over sine of C. Now, in our special case, let's see what we have. We're looking for x, okay, the angle that goes with that is going to be 30 degrees. We're given 10, but we don't have the corresponding angle. So we can get that, we're given the other two angles, so we'll note the angle that we're missing is going to be, okay, we get that by, we have 180 degrees, the sum of the angles of a triangle, equals our missing angle plus 30 degrees plus 15 degrees. So our missing angle is 135 degrees. Now, we put that in our law of sines. So we'll have 10 over sine of 135 degrees. Okay, 10 goes with our missing angle. And then x goes with 30 degrees. So we have this equal to x over sine of 30 degrees. So once we solve for these items, we get our x. First, 135 degrees. Okay, in radians, that's just the multiple of pi fourths. If we take a look, that's going to be in the second quadrant. So in the second quadrant, the sine, which is the y value in the unit circle, is positive. So here we're going to get a square root of 2 over 2. Then I go to sine of 30 degrees. Okay, so that's going to be in the first quadrant. We know that 30 degrees is the same as pi 6. So if pi thirds and pi 6, this is going to be the smaller angle. That means it's lower, which means it has the smaller sign, okay, the smaller y value. So of 1 half or square root of 3 over 2, square root of 3 over 2 is about 0.87, the sign is going to be 1 half. So I'm going to take our square root of 2 over 2, take our 1 half, put things in. That gives me x equals 10 times a half over square root of 2 over 2. If I multiply by 2 over 2 to clear the denominators, we get 10 over square root of 2. And that's roughly 7.07. .07. Let's check our work. I'm going to solve for the missing side, so let's call that y. And then we're going to see if we can get all items in our triangle to hang together. Now, we're going to solve for y by using the law of sines again. So I'll have y over the sine of 15 degrees, the opposite. It's going to be equal to 10 over the sine of 135 degrees, which is square root of 2 over 2. Isolate y, then I put the missing items into a calculator. We'll get that y is roughly 3.66. Okay, we'll put that in for this side here. Next, we're going to take the top vertex. I'm going to draw in the line segment that goes perpendicular to the base. It gives me two right triangles. What I want to do now is find the base of each of these triangles. We're going to use the identity that the cosine of an angle equals the adjacent over hypotenuse for a right triangle. So for the triangle on the left, our angle is going to be 30 degrees, our hypotenuse is 3.66, the adjacent is going to be 3.17. For the triangle on the right, we'll have angles 15 degrees, hypotenuse is 7.07, .07, so our adjacent is going to be 6.83. When we add these two bases together, what do we get? We're going to get a 10, and that's going to match what we had originally for our base. So that's going to be my check. Let's see why the law of sines holds. Now, we're going to take our triangle, lay one side on the ground, and then I'm going to take top vertex, draw on the segment that's perpendicular to that base. We're going to have two cases. For the first case, that segment is inside the triangle. Okay, something like this. Let's call the length of that segment z, and then we'll call our angles a, b, and then opposite sides a and b also. Now, we have two right triangles, so I can use the identity from trig that the sine of an angle that's not 90 degrees on a right triangle is going to be equal to the length of the opposite side 
over the length of the hypotenuse. I'm going to use that twice. So I'm going to have z equals b times the sine of a and z equals a times the sine of b. Set these two equal to each other, and then we divide both sides by sine a times sine b. That gives us one of our equalities. Okay, what happens if that segment falls outside the triangle? Well, we're still going to have two right triangles if we draw it in, but we'll need to do a little bit more work. Now, okay, we'll label here, okay, we have our Z, and then we'll have angles A and C, and then opposite sides A and C. Okay, using the angle A, we'll have that Z is equal to, okay, C times the sine of A. If I use angle C, we've got to be a little bit clever here. Now, if you note at this vertex, if I consider the half plane, okay, the supplementary angle is going to be 180 minus C degrees. So, I want to blow up this triangle here. That's going to give me, okay, we'll have this length is Z, this length is A, and this angle is 180 degrees minus C. So, what are we going to have? We're going to have that Z equals A times the sine of 180 minus C. All right. If I take a look at our unit circle, okay, now in this case we have an obtuse angle, meaning bigger than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees, so it's going to be in quadrant two. If I take 180 degrees minus C, that's going to give me the angle that's in the first quadrant at the same height. So it's going to be over here. So that's going to mean the sine is going to be the same, okay, the sine is the Y value in the unit circle. So what comes out then is going to be A times the sine of C. And then we apply the same algebra to get the quotient.